Okay, it has just gone half past three. I'm going to jump in now and introduce this session. Thank you so much for joining us this afternoon after another busy day, I'm sure, for everyone in this um, lockdown period for us in the UK. Um, just to let you know, I pasted a link into the chat there. If you are an English setting, state funded, um, we would love you to fill in the form that we need to get from you. It takes about five minutes to fill it in. Um, most of it's done, well, a bit of it's done for you. It should say Mount Hawk Academy. Um, the form is all to do with the fact that um, we have received funding up until Easter as part of the EdTech Demonstrator Programme to bring um, lots and lots of these webinars to you to help schools navigate their journey, mostly through remote education, um, but also thinking about longer term uh, strategy for schools, primary schools in our case, um, looking at their use of technology and using it well um, over the coming months and years. Um, so I am going to hand over very shortly to uh, Morris Smith and Mark Harding from Indian Queen's School um, because they have um, been very much piloting um, the use of learning by questions in their school in Indian Queens in Cornwall. Um, we ran a uh, trial in summer two uh, of last year and um, it resulted in those teachers um, picking it up and using this product and it seems to have snowballed from there and of course lots of schools are thinking about assessment at the moment. Lots of schools are thinking about um, retrieval practice um, with those being featured in Ofsted seven points. Um, so it's fitting in there. There are pros and cons with this product. It may not be, I mean, it certainly probably won't be what you think it is going to be um, when you think about an assessment system like this. Um, so there's a lot to be excited about with it. And actually, I'd have to say, it's probably just the beginning of, of many products that will begin to work in this way um, with assessment for learning. Um, so a tiny bit more about the EdTech Demonstrator Programme, just to let you know that there are lots and lots of resources that we have made available again up until Easter 2021. Um, there's some links on here. You will receive these slides after the session and I believe I'm also going to be able to send over slides from Mark and Morris. And at the end of their presentation, uh, we will have a Q&A session. This session is supposed to be running for 45 minutes, but if it goes on longer, if there's anyone who wants to um, talk a little bit more about this product or, or anything else in particular, um, you'll be more than welcome. So I'm going to share back now to you guys. Um, Sitting, I'm I'm in a school. I've had a busy day with year twos. Those guys have had another busy day, I'm sure. So over to Mark and Morris. Uh, thank you, Giles. So uh, just to quickly uh, introduce myself, uh, I'm Mark Harding over here. I've got Morris Smith here, and we've also, we've also got uh, Andrew Pond there as well. Andrew, who's uh, was in on the trial. So there's three of us here, and we feel like we've very much uh, embedded uh, LBQ into the school over here with uh, certain limitations you know but we're, we're quite uh, innovative over here i think uh, the lockdown has allowed us to try new things particularly with less children and lbq is one of those areas to give you some background uh, giles pointed us towards this uh, back in lockdown one where we seem to have more time to experiment and look around explore different bits and pieces and uh, lbq was suggested by giles and i must admit at first i was i was very skeptical about it it looked quite dry it looked quite uh, bland first of all and i didn't think much of it uh, those of you who are familiar with what we do in uh, cornwall many years ago when i was an nqt there was a merlin vle project but I felt then that the technology wasn't quite there. The broadband speeds required to make it work weren't there at all. But now with the advances in technology in the 10 years since, we're at a stage now where we can do real time uh, assessment. And I think LBQ does work really, really well with that. Um, so the more I looked at it between the three of us and talking between us and uh, I also found that in lockdown one with my own children, uh, when it got to the point where paper copies were getting a bit tired, I started to uh, resort to using just LBQ. I have a, a 10 year old and a seven year old at home and I tried it with them 
and they took to it really well. I think the variation in questions that we'll move on to and see in a moment is really useful and they responded to it. So then when we came back, wasn't it nice in, in June, uh, we tried it with them. And yeah, so we've, we've used this in, in two different ways almost. Um, one in a lockdown situation with some children at school and some children at home. And we also had an opportunity in the autumn term to try it with four classes. So we've had a range of uses for um, LBQ and it's had strengths and weaknesses for both, really. Um, it's been used in, in slightly different ways in the, in the two styles of settings. Um, but we have been able to adapt how we've used it and how it works for us mm, so um, in both it's been a very good opportunity, really, that we could uh, innovate, really, and, yeah. and change things. And it's moving at quite a fast pace. I mean, Jody's in here as well, and he'll support the fact that what we were doing back in uh, kind of April when we first looked at it, it's almost unrecognisable to what it is now. Even this week, the PowerPoint we're, we're going to show you in just a moment is technically out of date because they've even added some extra development features on Monday. So uh, what I'm showing you is slightly out of date. I mean, it's only it's very gradual movements in, in a certain direction. But if I share the uh, screen with you a moment. There we go. Yeah. So uh, this is just a, a quick guide to what we've been doing. But you can see there at the bottom the amount of awards that have uh, come out and uh, what we can see. So hopefully everyone can see this first screen hopefully um as you you can see as well um if you have any comments feel free to pop them into the chat and uh giles will be uh, i don't that. think it's uh, i don't think it's sharing this time actually Not Mark, you try. Okay, let's have okay. a... sometimes a sometimes a try again gets it there it certainly worked the other day when we uh did a yeah. test on there didn't it? yeah let's give it another go oh, yes. Like this and then enjoy that one again. And yeah, that's back to that. Nice, no, that's back to that. Uh, we'll just experiment with this one a moment longer. Dun, 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 dun. Yeah. So, uh, anyway, learning by questions, we have, um, like I said, we've used this in two different in two different ways. Hopefully, our presentation will be able to explain the difference um, between sharing it with a whole class and it being part of whole class teaching and also using it in terms of remote learning, in terms of assessment. Um, like Giles said at the end, we can answer any questions. We have got experience of how we've used it and how it's worked for us in both of those. Um, so if our presentation doesn't answer that, please feel free to um, ask us anything at all. There we go, Mark. There we go. Oh, it wouldn't be right if there wasn't a slight technical glitch somewhere. Dripping down your forehead there, but uh, <laughs> yeah, well, no. I, I, we've done this meeting a couple of times. I did it just now as uh, Joe will back me up, and everything worked perfectly smoothly there. But these yeah. little techno gremlins like nothing more than popping up. So basically, this is a quick guide. And as I was saying, there you can see at the bottom the amount of awards that the company have um, won, and it is definitely something that seems to be coming to the forefront. Like Giles said, I think there will be copycat companies appearing quite quickly but uh, as ever this is probably the first company that's really putting it about and um, getting the idea there's our contacts and i know morris will be uh, spreading it around um, for people who need any extra support as well sending this powerpoint out so why use lbq i mean the impact and motivation as i said when we're trying it with the children here they do seem to be very very interested in it it's, it's motivating because it's quite different it's different to tt rock stars and and some dog which are more game based this is more learning based so it just has that feel of being um like more grown up doesn't it it does and it's definitely something when you see the classroom full of children working on it um, everybody's focused on this nobody's trying to access other screens it does have that that real motivation for them to finish and carry on it, it's been very very uh, good for the children to get straight into i think that the main thing is the ease of the how you can spot misconceptions so when we're running the actual task uh, different colors pop up depending on whether they're getting it right the first time the second time and so on but because it's in real time, you can identify very quickly the children that need help. I think we've all been in the position where uh, the other year I had, what was it, 37 in the class. And it was physically difficult to get around and see every child in every lesson. And uh, there'd always be that child that missed out. And when I would come to mark their books, they'd had a misconception that had 
taken root and they'd muck the whole thing up and it would need a lot of rectification the following day. But with this system, it flashes up immediately. Within seconds, you can see if a child has got a, a misconception and long before it has chance to take root, you can address it. And I think that's one of the strengths of this. It's also very quick and easy. It's definitely um, eased our workload. And I think that's a, a key word at, at the moment. Now that we're into the habit of using it, we've seen the, the benefits of, of using it as an assessment tool. And as it says there, reducing workload, it, it really has made a difference. Yeah, the, uh, we're using it on top of some um, working books as well. And um, we might talk a little bit more about that later on. Um, but we have used it as a tool that is marked very quickly. And like Mark said, we can see children's misconceptions as it goes, but it does allow us really, really quickly to, and easily to assess children and support their learning. Mm. It does have its downsides as well, but there are pros and cons. I think the pros outweigh the cons, but as it says here, the interactive real-time teaching tool, the fact that it flashes up immediately and you can act on it there and then, reinforces independence as we'll go on to see later on we're using it as a remote learning tool and the feedback we're getting from parents is they really like the independence from the children the visual representations are there not to give them the answer but to help them with the method um, i found with my children at home when i was working on paper if they were getting stuck on something i'd grab a whiteboard and, and draw something to help them through but I noticed on LBQ what I was drawing was exactly the same as the representations which are there. So, um, it, as I said, it's like a, just a, an easier way of doing things. The visual representations are really very good and they're varied as well. Uh, remote learning tool, as I've said, the assessment matrix we'll look at in a moment is what shows uh, the performance of the children and it's in different colours. Uh, one of the uh, evolutionary aspects that I've just added on literally this week is the ability to assess children individually. So uh, for a in same day intervention, a child might flash up as red because they've got so many wrong or need so many tries. So that's something that's just added on that we can uh, identify those instantly. <coughs> We've also been using it, um, started to introduce using it in year six with some of our teaching assistants. If there are children um, who have found certain aspects of the learning challenging, um, um, we're aware that some of the um, teaching assistants might not necessarily have the specific language or the subject knowledge, but actually working with the child with LBQ alongside them with the hints and suggestions it makes has really had a, a positive impact on the interventions as well. Um, the tools for assessment can also have, you can have a look at their original score, a little bit of intervention, a little bit of input, and then once they go back again, you can actually track and see the improvements. You can track how many attempts they've had, what the attempts were. The data that it gives you is, is very, very in-depth. Yeah, I mean, the analysis tools that uh, we'll be showing you as well, we can see the response time with the children uh, when they're asking things. Uh, certain questions flash up, we can see all sorts. The track classes have just been asked as well. Yeah, we were part of the development program for the company and uh, one of the key things we were putting forward, uh, there's I think there's about a few schools across the country, we were all saying about track classes, that ability to look back at previous performance and see improvement. And also the huge questions there. Uh, when I did this CPD myself and Morris back in September, they were running at about 60,000 question sets, but now I believe it's up to about 90,000. So that shows the evolution, how quickly this is moving. The cons on the other side, though, you do really need one uh, tablet or computer per child. We've tried it with two, but it's quite difficult to get them to work together. Therefore, individual ones make a, a huge uh, difference. The questions towards the end of the sets are very complex, even for the, the um, objectives from lower years. Um, it's quite difficult to um, uh, express how quickly that curve goes up as you work your way along. The problem solving questions in the maths, um, it, some, of the, some of the skills that are needed for those. Um, it's been very good for our children. It's improved their problem solving um, in understanding what the question asks of them. Um, but they tend to be the questions that they're getting stuck at a little bit more with at home. Um, yeah, it seems to be pitched quite high generally. There's nothing wrong with that though. Uh, 
the first the feedback we get from some of the children is it can be quite frustrating there's a variation with some of the questions uh, some ask for a unit at the end others ask for you know the inverted commas in in a certain place but they're not in another one so it's slightly frustrating for the children and i think the worst thing for the children is there's no real pat on the back at the end of the activity it literally just says you know well done you've finished and it's very uh, reading heavy it's quite key stage two uh, biased in a way, um, maybe year two, but I think really from there upwards, it's it's what it's aimed at. Uh, the main key thing with this is the misconception catching, that idea that you can see instantly a child that's struggling and you can go straight into it. Sometimes we have the matrix, which I'll show you in a moment, up on the board because you can get that competitive element going along. But then we've learned through trial and error that we if we have a laptop open we can sensitively identify a child and then go over with the laptop and talk it through with them in more detail one of the things that we tried to do in our normal classroom practice was um, to get around as many children as possible as often as possible um, and as we moved obviously into the current situation trying to keep a little bit more distance and trying to keep the number of times we went to each child um, LBQ was absolutely perfect in that we could get to the child as they needed the the assistance, as they needed the help, rather than constantly going around. So we could spot when children had had three, four maybe attempts at a question and were getting stuck on something to be able to either go over to them or if there's more than one person doing it, we can actually pause the task, bring something up onto the whiteboard in front of the whole class and show everyone. Um, and, and while that was very good initially for maybe keeping a little bit more distance at first, actually when we had the whole classes back in, we saw how powerful that could be in a whole class teaching environment as well. Yeah, we were very lucky when uh, the year six here started to come back in June because it gave us the opportunity to experiment on them uh, to be kind of guinea pigs. Uh, I, I think as teachers, we quite like to experiment on our own children, first of all, with these ideas and then expand it to certain little groups. And we rolled it out to our year six in uh, September, had really positive feedback. And now we've rolled it out to the whole of key stage two. Uh, for this particular lockdown but we'll move on to the remote learning in a moment teach mode is one of the options that we have there and you can see the uh, improvement in the high quality questions this has gone from 60,000 to over 90,000 now but this is a free account option where you can just log on get an account and you can use the slides as a, a teaching resource it's a bit limiting it's not very interactive but it, it's good to have there as a uh, an extra option i have put some videos on here for uh which i believe um giles can when we when out. we email out the powerpoint there'll be an opportunity to look at those yeah they're, they're very good those ones you can tell some of them are, are actors and uh you know children straight out of theater school but it is very good and it gives you an insightful idea of what it is and uh, as i said the company are always building on this so uh the next slide here is about the calendar. This is a system that we've really got into lately where we can plan tasks. Uh, we're allowed to put on three tasks at a time. And we tend to find that with PK pre key stage children, we tend to have one task specially set for them and then another two rolling in the background as well. For remote learning, we're putting on three uh, a day, a maths and English and a science. And we use this uh, calendar function to set them up. It's really useful. It's been very good to help with um, alongside our planning. Like Mark said, in, in our normal classroom practice, it allowed us to set three tasks um, potentially just for maths, where we could differentiate which task the children used. Um, and in lockdown, we have ten, in the remote teaching, we have tended to put an English task on, a math task and another task. And we can use that um, scheduling calendar to match up with our planning what we want the children to do in advance. Yeah, as I said, that seems to be working quite well, where we're having a lesson and we're almost using the LBQ as an additional crutch in the lesson. So that it's book based and they're working through. But then when they get stuck on a particular book based question, then they flick across to the LBQ, do a little bit of that flick back and then they've got more of an insight to carry on. So it's um, an independence resource as well. This is the kind of thing that you see. You can see the objectives are linked to the national curriculum uh, objectives so we can match them up quite easily depending on year as well uh, this is the kind of thing that the children see so it's this like blue kind of uh, outset 
uh, and we uh, have the ability to pause at any moment. So when uh, normally it's a particular question that seems to catch the class out and then we can pause it, we can bring it up in an ad hoc mode and discuss it, talk it through. But every um, device is paused at that time. So we're finding that that immediately focuses the children. We go through it and then they can carry on. Some of the visual representations are really good. It, it's very differentiated in, in that uh, respect. Uh, you can see here this is a, a science one and we have a maths ones there as well. They don't give the answer, but they just help with the method. They, they give um, assistance to it. And as I said before, I found with my own children that by it was what I would be drawing for them. And as well as showing the visual representations, as you can see on the left hand side of the screen, the children have an opportunity to draw on the question, to annotate the question, to do their workings on the question. There's a pull down screen that as a teacher you can use um, to draw on and hide and reveal. So it's not a static display that can't be written on. And in terms of English, this is the kind of thing that comes up. We're finding that the grammar and the spelling in particular is very, very useful. I, I think the reading comprehension is an area that they could be improved on. It's very good for retrieval, single word bits and pieces. I think the vocabulary could be improved as well. But the three point questions that we're so familiar with, that's the area I think LBQ need to address because that's slightly harder to do. There is the old question where the children are expected to type in their answer and you can check it manually yourself. But uh, that's the only weak area really. But the grammar and the spelling like this is really, really useful. Also, if the children get an answer wrong, it pops up with a little box to give them a bit of a nudge in the right direction. And one of the things we've suggested as well in the development programme is maybe that needs to be um, an increased level of support. The more times they get it wrong, if they get it wrong twice, then it's something else and so on and so forth. Here's a graph of some of the maths mastery structure of the questions, because usually in the English and maths, there's about 30 questions or so, and it works through like this. The, the first few understanding, getting used to it, quite straightforward. Then it moves on to fluency, to reasoning. And then we're finding that the problem solving at the end, whether it's an endurance thing or whether the children are finding it slightly harder to um, contextualize the uh, what he's asking for, that one's proving slightly harder. But actually, um, some of the questions, the way that they're structured, it, it really does challenge the problem solving for them to break down what the questions are asking, apply other mathematical skills and draw in their knowledge. So I think what we sometimes find is that if the children are relying on the fluency and the reasoning from only that lesson, that's where they, they, they need that little nudge from a teacher to help with, um, just to kind of see that, that, that match to help them solve the problems. This is one of the examples of the uh, problem solving algebra uh, and it just shows how you can add bits to it and like Morris was saying there's a grey screen function where you can pull that over and the child can make jottings directly onto the screen. That lends itself more to tablet use really than uh, laptop use but we're still using it with Chromebooks here. Quite yeah we, we use Chromebooks at school and the children will still use the trackpad to be able to draw on. The drawings aren't perfect, they know that. However, um, chatting with the children at home, they're much happier using this on the tablets. The, the drawing function has come into its own for a few children where they have that ability much easier to, to draw with their finger on the screen. So the tablet does really help with that. As you can see, some of the visual representations of this algebra one are really, really useful. And that's exactly what you'd be drawing on a whiteboard to help a child. So the fact that it's already there just uh, makes everything a little bit easier. One of the things that we're very aware of is our um, calculation policy. Obviously, each school will have your own calculation policy. You'll have your own visual representations that your school uses. And while some of the learning by questions might not fit exactly, a lot of them are very close approximations or if nothing else, they're a very good challenge for your children to see the maths presented in a slightly different way. There are a lot of bar models. There's a, a variety of um, fraction um, visual representations. There's a lot of use of money, which is very, very good um, and measures as well. So while, while it might not fit exactly with your um, calculation policy or representation policy, um, it is often very close and it is, is a nice extra challenge for your children. Would you say it's the latest thinking, the, the latest kind of... Yeah, it fits very closely. I know there's a lot of question sets um, from the White Rose. If you're using White Rose, there's a lot of question sets that are aligned to White Rose. There's also a new section about the um, ready to progress <laughs> criteria. 
Um, so for each of the ready to progress criteria for each year group, um, there are a set of questions um, assigned to each year group for those as well. Uh, the other areas, and AJ, you were asking about this, this is an example of some of the uh, uh, science uh, content, which is very uh, useful. I mean, you can see the, the variation of the visual clues there. Um, the spelling does need to be accurate. It is aimed, I would say, towards the top of key stage two more than anything else, where you have to be quite accurate with your answers. It can be frustrating, but generally the children are really enjoying it. And unlike other things like TT Rock Stars or some dog where the enthusiasm starts to drop off because this is so wide and varied, we're not really seeing that. I think the children can sense when it's uh, an activity where repetition is more important, whereas this is more about learning. And, I, and that's where I think it really comes into its own. This is the kind of thing that you see. So we're using this for home learning at the moment. We embedded it with year six really well before lockdown and we rolled it out to the years three, four and five at the start of uh, this particular lockdown. Uh, so we were relying on the parents to engage, but we're getting really good engagement stats uh, in year six. We're at a massive 95 percent every day logging on and the parents are telling us they like the independence they like the the fact that the children can understand it themselves they like the visual representations in year three we're getting about 60 percent engagement uh year four and five is closer to 75 80 percent as well so uh, that's really positive one of the things we're finding as well is um, in terms of assessment we've got um, a mixture of home adult support for the mass work that we're setting so we are still setting um, children tasks from White Rose. Some of them are clearly outperforming what they would do in the classroom. Um, there are examples on the White Rose materials we send home of parents handwriting and parents really, really maybe overstructuring some of the work for them, but it's brilliant to see the children being given that support. Um, but the feedback we're getting is actually the LBQ is, is, is a chance for the people at home to and um, maybe take a break from the home learning for a little while, maybe focus on another child, maybe catch up with something else that, that our parents are really busy with, a chance to check their own work emails. And what we find is it's a lot more independent um, and always in a way a better, a better assessment tool for it because we can really see if the children are doing this on their own, um, what they are struggling with rather than how much help they've had with from their parents. Um, we are still getting children for um, who are messaging into us for help, which we can then message back. So we can still provide that support at home in our right learning if they get stuck on a particular question. So it's been very powerful for that. As you can see there, it is possible to download an app as well, you know, on the on the App Store, uh, Google Play and Microsoft and so on and so forth. You'll notice there there's a uh, address as well, www.lbq.org slash task. We can run a live demo uh, at some stage as well if there's uh, enough time, but we're finding the home learning is really, really useful. And that shows how innovative you can be with this uh, platform. This is the magical matrix as well. This is the key part of the LBQ system. If you have a free account, you don't get access to this kind of thing. But uh, with the uh, full subscription, you can see the pupils down the side there on the left. You can see the score that they're getting and they get a point every time they get it right first time. And of course, in year six, we're very keen on children getting things right first time as they would in a test. Uh, and also being able to cope with that slight uh, pressurized situation of working through. As you can see along the top, the one, two, three, four, five, it shows you the kind of questions that children are struggling at. So we could safely say one, two, three, that's dark green, that's absolutely fine. Four, five, yeah, you know, that's a slightly lighter. Six, seven, they're quite happy. But if we look at 12 and 15, they're the questions that are flashing up as yellow, where a few people are finding that a little bit harder. So that's where we'd pause and go through it in a bit more detail. It also helps when you've got the children who might progress quicker through a task. If you look to, like, to some of the later problem solving questions, um, those red those red um, boxes with the high numbers kind of tell you in advance that actually this is going to be a whole class problem. Um, and that's an opportunity then to pause the task, to pull up the question with everyone, talk about what the question perhaps might mean, what operations it, it, it's kind of asking for, and really work through those problem solving steps a little bit before sending the children back to the task. Um, I think Mark will agree. It's, it's one of the most satisfying things, especially when children are working at home, when when we're pausing something, mm. sending a little bit of feedback and mm. seeing those red and yellow squares suddenly 
turn green and move on. It it, it really shows that 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 bit of intervention you gave really worked. Mm. As you can see here, uh, pupil 14 at the top there, quite happy with one, two, three, pretty much. Struggled on four, took five attempts, and then five couldn't get it at all. And you'll notice the system, the algorithm it's using, has actually given it an, an additional question. So we were told that about if you're not getting seven out of ten, then uh, you get um, additional questions. So eight, nine, ten are the additional ones. And um, we quite like the idea that if children aren't achieving a certain percentage and they get a, a same day intervention in the afternoon. The track classes show what's going on. So basically here we can see that addition and subtraction, they're generally green. That's all very good. You know, they don't have to worry about that too much. Place value, though, is more yellow. So that immediately highlights to us that we need to reinforce the place value knowledge. Multiplication and division is a bit of a mix of both. So there's a few green ones there, quite happy with that, but a few yellows as well, which probably need a little bit more analysis. So from this straight away, it's almost uh, you can't really do that with books. You know, when you're flicking back through, it's very harder to get that picture. But with this uh, analytical tool, we can see the areas we need to address. You can then also as well with the um, assessment delve much deeper into each of those graphs, into each of those colours to really pinpoint down which questions exactly, which areas exactly the the class, the individual, the groups were having issues with. Um, you can really break down every single question. We can have a look at the kinds of wrong answers that were given. How many people were answering it correct first time? Did they need more attempts at it? Um, it allows you to have a look at the weaknesses for every single question as well as those broad overviews. So um, it allows you at a glance, it allows you to really delve into each individual question, it allows you to unpick individual children and groups. It, it, it has a whole wealth of data for you to, to help you plan to assess and to, to work with your learners. Yeah, the more you dig down, the more you find, really. I mean, here is a screen of some of the analytical tools where you're really interested in some of the most challenging questions. We can look at the timings, how long it's taking people to respond for those children who are daydreaming in the corner. Um, this is the track class as well. So this goes down to the individual children where you can look at their key areas and their key uh, weaknesses. So, for instance, the darker the green, the better. The yellows are the ones where we perhaps need to do more interventions with. I wanted to put this slide in because it shows the improvement over time. So uh, the central uh, matrix there shows we did an activity where they found it quite hard. You can tell because of the amount of yellows and reds and bits and pieces there. Whereas then we came back a little bit later after some additional teaching and you could see the improvement much more green on the right hand side there. So a really good uh, sign of improvement between those two activities. So it really helps you. Um... It's, it's, a, it's an extra tool on top for assessment. I wouldn't say it would do get rid of all of your other assessment um, strategies and routines. It's something in addition. It's something on top of. It's something to help in um, assessing other ways as well. And as Maurice was saying, this is something that we've um, worked on uh, and experimented with is sending the screen out to individual children who are working at home and in the class for that matter. So, for instance, this algebra question, we were able to identify that they were finding this one hard. So then we would go into ad hoc mode. We would add extra information there. Remember, multiplication is implied, so it's A times B equals 24. Adding on some extra little hints as well for them. And then we can remotely send that out to everybody. And we found it's about 10 seconds for them to notice it. So we would do that, send it out to them, count for about 10 seconds then unpause it because we basically take control of their screens for a second and show them this uh, they can't do anything else they have to see it and then after 10 seconds they start again and it like i said it's really encouraging to see the children then get the question right thanks to that little bit of extra help yeah same day interventions i think this is the next step for us here at indian queens is we'd like to use it as a same day intervention i know a lot of secondary schools are using mass watch or a program like that where they uh, if they the child doesn't achieve a certain percentage and it's flagged up as a same day intervention we i think all schools have a slight issue with tas delivering the intervention and not necessarily having the subject knowledge that would be useful. But this system would identify the exact questions that they need to go through with the child and it provides the answers as well. And with those visual representations, I think that's a really good assistance for the TA. It seems to make them much more confident that they can explain it and sort out any issues. The TAs, the teacher assistants can also, um, of course, 
be given the resources that would match your calculation policy, match your resource policy. But alongside the questions that they get stuck on, they can model it in the way that you would show them that that matches your school's calculation policy, but also show them how it links into the, the visual representation shown on the question. And there you go. So that concludes our little presentation. Thank you very much. If I now unshare that one. Thanks so much, uh, Mark and Morris. That was the second time that you've done that today, I believe, and it's uh, very much appreciated. You went into so much depth um, with the product, and it's and it's wonderful to see that it's um, you know obviously having uh, clear benefits as as the school goes on, and um, you know taking just the right approach with it, with scaling it up and understanding it well. Um, I guess one thing I would like to sort of point out to people, but particularly across our trust is that you know you've gone into so much depth here about how it works and you've you've found those things out over time right and and experimented yeah, and ever, really. further and further with it um if if staff want to dip their toe into it um as i did um back in um the first lockdown period for schools um you know it is easy enough to set up the the trial account and and get in there and have a go um and and i I found with my year three, four class that again, it was it was bringing a certain amount of, of sort of success um, from day one and was injecting that bit of variety that everybody needs in these remote education circumstances. So I wouldn't want people to feel um, that they have to understand it all before they can do it. You know, you, you don't have to. You can you can jump in there and use it. But right, we've got some questions coming in there. Yes, yeah, SATs, there is a, an option there to actually run a SAT and anyone who's had to uh, trawl through marking SAT paper after SAT paper after SAT paper. Uh, that's something I think we will be looking at in the future and assessing with that. That's something that we've kind of got planned for this year six when they come back. Yeah, in, in terms of impact, positive impact on our baseline data, unfortunately, I guess because of the time frame and time scales we've been working on, um, we did see some really positive improvements, especially in maths for the cohort this year, um, working up to Christmas. So we we started off with obviously the same um, gaps in understanding that had occurred from the first lockdown. We had um, a lot of issues where some children hadn't had as much support at home. And we really felt like we were closing those gaps and making good progress against the SATS baseline data we got at the beginning of the year. It, it almost seems a shame almost um, for this second lockdown. Um, so we've got nothing concrete that we could say apart from we, we were seeing positive accelerated progress from the cohort this year. Yeah, I mean, to give you some data, we ran uh, the baseline spelling, let's say. Uh, we scored 12 out of 20 at first, and then after LBQ by Christmas, they were scoring 14, 15. So that, I know that's a marginal improvement, but I think it's the same with the maths and, and the grammar and the reading comprehension as well. I know I've uh, kind of dissed the reading comprehension a little bit, but that's just that retrieval element of it. As, as, as it said, we did see a good improvement in our data. And I think if we carried on as well, we were going to intensify it. We ran our year six revision club. Yeah, uh, that was solely, really useful for that. Solely on LBQ before we've always tried to grab, you know, resources here, there and everywhere. But this time we split the whole of the year six into two classes and, and we kind of like did an upper and a lower and mixed in the different LBQ. And that was really worth it just for that. Yeah, I think I think as, as a tool to um, to see that idea for for those boosters for those for those extra sessions um I, i'd really like to see when all the children return us continuing to use this i think the parents will be much happier to sign on to this and so if there is something that occurs in the lesson and the day-to-day -day teaching obviously we'll have that same day intervention we will plan and assess how we will um, change our lessons but i think lbq is a great addition i don't think it replaces a lot of the things in your class teaching it's there as an extra tool it's there as something on top it's something to to push further mm. it's something parents like it's something that the children mm. engaged with it's something that happens so. i think it's quite a good um catch-up tool as well we yeah. noticed that we could do an hour's worth of traditional learning in about 20 minutes 
So when you look at it at that basis of that time saving, it was really, really useful. We've been talking to our local um, CEO, Vanessa, about this catch up idea, this idea that we could bring back the year sixes. We were in a transition meeting with our secondary schools yesterday saying that we will try and catch them up to where they would like them to be by using this kind of system. As Morris says, though, it's not an, uh, an answer to everything. You know, but it's definitely a very good tool. In in response to Chris's question there, can it be used to replace traditional homework? Um, we did approach LBQ um, about this and we have had um, some limited success. It depends how you set your homework. And um, the way LBQ works is that it changes every single day. Um, you need a code every single day to access. If you were to set your homework that needed to be done that night, you could open the task until eight, nine o'clock and get the children to do it that night and it would give you the data for the next day. If you set your homework over a period of time at the moment, no LBQ doesn't do that. Um, but I mean, in terms of in terms of we, we set our homework over a period of several days, but actually when we have set the occasional task to be done of an evening, it really focuses the children to go home and get it done. We yeah. found it was really positive, so. Yeah, I mean, Stephanie's question there as well about devices. We have tried it between pairs with a bit of collaborative working together, and that does work. I mean, it's quite nice to know that, did it? But it, you just can't track it then. You can't rely on that assessment data. Yeah, so it does have value. It does have value in uh, one to two. We did we did use it as one to two, and it almost has a different kind of value. You use it in the way that you might with a whiteboard uh, lower down the school in some ways, where one person writes and one person has to type, or somebody has to explain it to the other person to put the answer in. So you can use it in that way, but but like Mark says, you you do lose that that real nitty gritty uh, analysis that you can really dig yeah. deep into. I can see with those questions. Yeah, yeah. I would go further. Uh, well, sorry, Chris was saying there about about device ratios in schools and things like that, and and basically to say, you know, you need one to one to make this work in your classes, really, as far as I I can see and and from my experience, and and you really need to um, be aware of how much equipment you've got and whether it's going to work well in those circumstances. You know, if you don't have the infrastructure there for your thirty devices to be running. Um, then don't look at this yet. And when you do start to look at it, it's looking at year five, six first. Yes, yeah. Down uh, where, so, yeah. Where, where you're going to get the most benefit up in those top two two years. So, having said that as well, Giles, we I wouldn't recommend using this entirely for the day. I think maybe one or two sessions a day. That we're not a one to one uh, school that has Chromebooks for every child, but we do have a trolley that goes round, a trolley of 30. So we try to book a slot every day or as regularly yeah. as we could for an hour to use that one device each. So if you're a school where you do have access to, uh, you know, uh, a trolley, something like that, where children could have a session where it's one to one, then this is ideal. <coughs> yeah, it's all about provisioning it and timetabling it and everything. And those those issues for schools are massive. You don't want people, you know, fighting over the equipment or whatever. It needs to be worked out in those terms. So again, you know, start, starting small and scaling up is, is the way to go, in my opinion. And it has to be said, you know, you guys have taken to this and it it's fitting in with what you want for your teaching and how, how it works. And and I, I would put myself in that position as, as well as someone who worked with it, um, sort of forcing it on people um, is perhaps not the, the right way to go with this. It's about finding the people who can make it work for your school and again, scaling up from, from there. So yeah. I know. think it can be quite daunting as well because when we started with it back in April, it's very different now. And I think if you were to come in cold, and looking at it, you might be slightly uh, scared off by the complexity, but it's evolving so quickly as well. And you almost want to get on the bandwagon before it goes too far and gets too complicated. But it's well worth a demo. Uh, yeah. I don't know if you agree with that, Giles. It's worth a crack at least. Yes, absolutely. And so you can sign up for a free trial on it. Um, and then we, um, as Aspire, we've we've um, sort of worked out that we're going to have a, a, a bigger more full scale trial where where data is is synced through to them um, and that will probably happen in summer one or summer two when the when the children are all back in fingers crossed you know and we're back to some sort of semblance of normality so that I, I noticed um Stephanie's question there about you know are we going to carry on um, when children aren't at home absolutely I mean uh, we we uh, planned this session 
um, when we felt that at this point um, we wouldn't be in another lockdown and it, it would be about giving this product momentum back in normal circumstances. So um, for, for me, it's brilliant that it works in, in the remote um, circumstances. And uh, actually you've reminded me of, of you know, the variety that, that it gives to children and the fact that it gives them independence is, is amazing. But yeah, absolutely, it, it, it's got its place, hasn't it? And, and I see it as being just part of part of what children should hopefully experience in the in their maths learning. Or, yeah, I mean, this, this is the second time.